So each of the four Gospels speak about Jesus and his ministry a little bit differently. They all have their own emphases and focuses. And in the Gospel of Mark that we've been looking at in the season of Epiphany and then we'll continue to look at throughout Lent, the emphasis is focused on Jesus' ability to heal people, to cast out demons and unclean spirits, and to heal people of illnesses. And today's gospel, I think, highlights that quite well. Now, that happens to be what stood out to me when I studied the gospel this past week. Now, a week ago, you heard about Jesus in a synagogue, and a man comes up to him and is kind of accosting him and interrogating him, But the man has something about him, and Jesus senses that the man isn't well and that some kind of spirit is within the man. And he tells the man and the spirit, be silent and come out of him. And then the the spirit leaves the man. And then, in today's gospel, immediately following that event... He leaves and goes to the house of Simon Peter's mother-in-law, a woman who was very ill. And Jesus took the woman by the hand, and her fever left. So his disciples now, seeing that he has this unique ability to do what a Messiah would hopefully do, to heal people and to cast out demons, well, they, they bring more people to him, people who were ill and and sick and had diseases and had demon possession. And as he always did, Jesus cured illnesses and he cast out demons. And then that following day, he went out, as he often did, to be alone, to pray. And his disciples, as they often did, well, they found him. And they told him that everyone was looking for him. And then, in the gospel today, Jesus said something that I think is kind of a pivotal moment that kind of sums up what he would do on the earth. He said, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And then it says, and he went throughout Galilee proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Now, what stood out to me are these two main focuses in the Gospel of Mark. Jesus came to proclaim a message and cast out demons. And I thought to myself, could could Jesus' mission and purpose be boiled down to only two things alone? Could it be that simple or could it be that confusing? A week ago in my sermon, I was in the traditional service and I asked those uh, gathered, I asked them, do you believe in demons? Do we believe in that today? Do we believe in demonic activity? Is that something that we accept today? being possessed by something unclean. And I ask this because in the Gospels, I think we have to think about why Jesus did this so often. Do we believe in the casting out of demons because Jesus and his ministry was so focused, so centered around casting out what were called demons at that day and time? And what I said last week, I think, is worth saying again. I said that while I don't always know what to make of demonic possession in the world today, I do know that there are things that prove to be destructive to us. And every one of us, I think, has faced something like that, something destructive, something that diminishes life. Now, it may be mental illness. It may be an addiction. It may be suicidal thoughts. It may be lust. It may be overeating. It may be 
anxiety, or a compulsion. But whatever it is, we need to know that these things attempt to take away life rather than giving life. And in that way, I think we still know what it means to be bound by something or possessed by something, don't we? It's not simply an epidemic that we find only in the pages of the Bible. Being bound by things, being held back and burdened by things that diminish life, it still affects us today. Okay, so back to Jesus' two main focuses. To proclaim a message and to cast out demons. And I had to ask myself then, what message did Jesus come to proclaim? In every gospel, that message seems to be to repent and to believe in the good news about the imminent kingdom of God. Now, repent simply means to turn around, to choose a new path. And believe in this new good news. But what is that good news? And is it connected to Jesus casting out demons and healing people from illness? Well, the good news of the kingdom of God is ultimately about life. But even that needs to be unpacked a little bit. God wants all people, all people to experience abundant life. Jesus said that even to his disciples. I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly. But the good news of the kingdom of God is also about Jesus and his own life, given in sacrificial love to a world in need of forgiveness. So when something destructive Something evil binds itself to us and tries to lie to us and make us feel unloved or unworthy. When anything like that takes a hold of us, even today, in the world today, I would still call it demonic. And it needs to be silenced. And it needs to be cast out. So much of what Jesus did on the earth focused on helping people to be unbound from things that were destructive to them, that prevented them from having life and being in community. These things distanced people from loved ones, from their community, and these things would take away their wholeness and their health and their well-being They would feel that maybe they couldn't be accepted or loved by God because they had something about them. Maybe an evil spirit, but maybe it was simply a condition like leprosy. But whatever it would be, it put them on the outside. And it made them feel unloved and unworthy. Has something like that ever affected you? Have you ever felt bound by something Something that felt like a burden that might be too heavy to bear? Have you felt ashamed by something? Felt guilt about something? Have you ever felt not good enough? These voices, they do bind themselves to us, don't they? And they often won't let up, and they, they take away life, and they take away hope, and they take away peace. It's like a fear that won't let go. The kingdom of God that Jesus spoke about, it was about life here and now. People having abundant life, living free of burden here and now. The people of Israel had a traditional view of what they believed was unclean and that what was unclean must be kept separate from what was unclean. Holy. The Jewish people of Jesus' day, they had purity laws that separated uh, people and, and animals that were thought to be unclean from elements considered to be holy. But look at what Jesus did. He lived in that world of purity laws that people who were thought to be unclean couldn't even 
couldn't even go into the temple. But then he announced the kingdom of God by touching a leper, by healing people of illness and confronting the demonic. These things didn't make Jesus unclean. Ironically, he made them holy. That's what Jesus did, and that's what God still does. He takes things about us that we feel guilty about, that we feel unclean about, that we feel bound by. He takes the broken, and he makes it whole again. He takes the oppressed, and he lifts them up. He takes that which is bound by anything, anything destructive, and he unbinds it. That's what God does. So the kingdom of God, the good news, this message that Jesus came into the world to tell, to proclaim, it's about giving health, wholeness, forgiveness, and and life to all people. And so it's good news because it's available To all people. To believe in God and to trust God is to believe in God's power to to silence and to cast out anything that diminishes life. Everything that causes us anxiety and fear. Everything that makes us doubt God's love for us. So whether or not you're able to believe in demons today, that might not even be the point. But I hope that you believe that God can take away everything that burdens you, that lies to you, that tells you that you're not good enough, that makes you feel unloved and unworthy. I hope you can believe that God has the power and the desire to silence all of that, everything that you feel bound by. And God does this out of love, complete love for you and me, and a desire that we have life, and that we have it abundantly. Amen.